accept you as you are. Praise the Lord. God has blessed our efforts. And here we are tonight celebrating. And thank you the Lord for all his blessings. I just thought about something today that um, I thought I'd just share a few minutes, but uh, Dr. McGee was supposed to come speak first, but he's back there on me. He said, <laughs> He said, you get tired of the man, but I, uh, in the, I believe it's the last chapter of Exodus after Noah and the flood. And when that was over, and they began to plant and reclaim the country, the Lord made them a promise. He said, as long as it's time, there will be a harvest time. There will be planting and sowing, and there will be a harvest time. <coughs> he promised us a perpetual harvest. That no way he would ever destroy the earth again like he did with the flood. That he would promise us harvest. Now I'm 93, I'll be 93 tomorrow. And all of my life, I've never seen a time when there wasn't the harvest someplace. We've had some scarce ones, but they were there. I don't believe it's only talking about living and eating. I believe it's also talking about saving souls, a harvest time. When I was a young man, I guess probably 12, 13, I was back in the days when everything was done by piecemeal. When the plant wheat, when the wheat grew up and headed out, they used a little vine and go out and cut it and make those bundles and we stack those bundles and shocks. Then at the harvest time, they had one of the old fashioned thrashing machines. Many of you have never seen one, I guess. But in the old time thrashing machines, they have the attractors on front with the pulley and had tractor pull the machine. Then we went out and gathered up the shocks. He came back and threw them in the thrasher. And it separated the chaff from the wheat. Don't ask me how, I don't know. And then on the end, I up, there was a spout that came out, and the hay came out of the spout and made haystacks. I was just a youngster, and I thought, man, I love What is something? I thought that was the most fantastic thing that I could ever remember about a harvest. I just said, Lord, I'd like to be one, one time with those thrash machines and be in the harvest. I was given an opportunity when I was about 16 at a battle wagon, two horses. He and I and another man. He and another man went out. I'd drive the wagon, he'd throw the bottles in. Then he'd drive the wagon, I'd throw the bottles in. There were several wagons holding the bottles. I'll never forget that day when I began to throw those shocks wheat 
Dat wij vrees misschien niet. En zien er al van zeker maar al een met lokaal te noemen. De goede kind had op, had een band op stairs. En de machine made a big haystack. You could fly through the country and you could hear, see haystacks. But of course those days are past. Different ways now of harvest. But that's my idea of a harvest. It's that separation. Taking care of the good and destroying the bad. If it is weeds, within the weeds in the bunch, even if they had uh, little seeds, very few of them, and we got in the wheat, then the wheat, of course, will be taken to the mills, and out of it would come flour, biscuits, bread, and all kinds of rolls. Amen. Every time now I sit down to eat, and there's a piece of bread, I think about the harvest. And tonight I was given some little bonds, little, I don't know what to call them bonds, but small things, sugar on top of them. As soon as I picked that one up, I thought, well, in the soul, they're here because God has given us a harvest. And when the Lord laid this place on our hearts, I won't take all the credit for it. I'll just take credit for bringing it up and helping Dr. McGee and his wife. I love her myself and my wife. And then eventually, my daughter and her husband, and eventually more and more joined in. We started without a penny. I only had a few people who came. But as time went on, every time I looked from that barn where we was having service, looked across to this piece of property, I could see the arena and see the church would be attached to the arena. And I could visualize hundreds and hundreds of people coming into the arena. And then several hundreds in the end coming to the cowboy church. And tonight, I want to give the Lord thanks and praise for it because he's worthy of all praise. Oh, a little over a month ago, I've been having all kinds of hilarious dreams of my whole year. I wound up in the hospital three times. The last time I went to the hospital to die, I really thought I was going to die. And I came all across. I remember my mind and my physical body were going down, down, down. And I went through an awesome dark time. And just as I reached the point where I could see the lights around the door in front of me, the Lord reached down and plucked me out of it. And said, I've got some more for you to do. And now these last month or so, I haven't thought about dying. I've thought about living. The harvest is still working. We'd like for you to know that we sent the money for 12 tabernacles to be made in Ivory Coast and hauled up to Niza. We already have some guys who want to go and put up the first one. And while they're putting them up, they're going to train some Africans to do it by themselves. Then I'm praying for 12 more. So when he gets those 12 done, he can pick up on 12 more. 
Well, things got a little tight. I, I can't help but tell you, uh, when things don't move real fast, I get a little bit discouraged. I believe it. You know, we're about good news crusades. We have enough money for at least two more. And I promise us some more. And Monday, I got a telephone call from a little church in Smith Mill, Oklahoma. Smithworth. Just a few miles from Broken Bow. Broken Air. Broken Bow. I preached there several times. I thought about a tabernacle church. And they've sponsored me for several years. They quit sponsoring me. The pastor said to me, I was, when he came and preached here, he said, I was, a, I was just a social pastor. But he said, when you got the message and talked about building tabernacle churches, I've never forgotten it. If it'd be all right with you, I'd like to build one of those tabernacle churches. I feel like screaming just like that little boy. Go girl, whichever one. Woo! Hallelujah. So he said, I'll put you back on the support list. Well, when I got through talking to him, the Holy Spirit spoke to him again. He said, see, when I speak, I don't change. I keep my word. By the time we get those 12 tabernacles finished, we're going to give him money for 12 more tabernacles. Then 12 more will make 37 tabernacles. Amen. Harvest time. I know there's something about harvest time. I'm going to ask you tonight to stand with me and I'm going to pray. Would you please stand? And the first thing I pray for, I want you to do and believe God. She had in my hand. Candy came and said her back was really terrible. I laid hands on her and prayed for her. Then she told several people that the pain left. And I hear today that she returned and was just a massive growth in her back. And I just prayed and I said, Lord, Boy, did I miss it? And I just feel that the Holy Spirit to say to me, you prayed for the pain. You didn't pay, pray for what was causing the pain. I'm going to ask you tonight to join with me and to leave God for complete healing and to be part of the harvest.